In this lecture, we take a look at a type of curves called B-splines that are used for curve fitting. Like with the Bessie curve, we take a group of points to trace out the B-spline curve. The B-spline curve may end up mimicking a path formed by segments as determined by pairs of points. As such, the path may be the boundary of the convex hull or part of the convex hull formed by the points. For this lecture, we will illustrate how to obtain the B-spline curve for four points. Four points means that the degree of the B-spline curve is 3. Like with Bezier curves, B-splines will not necessarily pass through the given points, but will only follow the general direction in which the points are sequenced. For this lecture, we will go from P1 to P2 to P3 to P4. At this point, we present the formula for the B-spline curve for P1 through P4. We define the curve, which we call capital B1 of T, parametrically. Lowercase b1, b2, b3, and b4 are real valued functions of t. Here, t goes from 0 to 1. We will not derive the formulas for lowercase b1 through b4, but instead provide their formulations here. We will, however, state key conditions in the end that lead to the formulations that we're about to see for lowercase b1 through b4. Lowercase b1 of t is the cube of 1 minus t all over 6. b2 of t is t cubed over 2 minus t squared plus 2 thirds. b3 of t is minus t cubed over 2 plus t squared over 2 plus t over 2 plus 1 sixth. Finally, b4 of t is a single term, t cubed over 6. We had stated that t is a real valued parameter between 0 and 1. Let us see what happens when t is equal to 0. The starting point of the B-spline curve at t equals 0 is this point. Contrast this with Bezier curves that generally start at the very first point, P1. This is typical of B-spline curves in that B-spline curves tend not to pass through any of the given points unless three consecutive points are exactly the same point. For example, if P1, P2, and P3 are exactly the same point, then the B-spline curve will pass through that point. It is an easy exercise that the viewer can verify that if P2 and P3 are also equal to P1, then capital B1 of 0 is equal to P1. Cubic B-spline curves, like the one that we are discussing, tend to start near P2. sub Then as T increases towards 1, the curve moves towards P3. It doesn't go much further in that at t equals 1, the curve does not get close to P4, unless three consecutive points are identically P4. We see the advantage of using these spline curves once we start adding points. With the addition of a point to the previous set of points, we do not have to recompute our B spline curve. In fact, we can retain the old parametrization and this graph and simply generate an extension of the old curve. To generate the extension, we get a new set of points, starting with P2, and then P3, and then P4, and then P5. That is, we don't include P1. So the sequence now is from P2 to P3, P3 to P4, and then P4 to P5. The parametrization for the new curve, which we call capital B sub 2, is almost exactly the same as that for capital B sub 1. 
observe that we use the very same real valued functions for capital B sub 2. We have simply increased the index of each point by 1. And as with capital B sub 1, for capital B sub 2, t also goes from 0 to 1. Like capital B sub 1, capital B sub 2 should start near the second point, which is P sub 3 for this group of points. In fact, capital B sub 2 starts off where capital B sub 1 ended. The result is that we have two segments forming one continuous curve. Writing this out as an equation, we have B1 of 1 equals B2 of 0. Continuity isn't the only thing that occurs at the common point between B1 and B2. We also have smoothness, that is B1 prime of 1 equals B2 prime of 0. This means that we actually have a tangent line at the common point. And exactly like Kib explains, we require that the second derivatives match at the common point. Let's see what happens if we were to add one additional point. This time, the sequence of points is P3, P4, P5, and P6. We call the next segment capital B sub 3, and it takes on exactly the same form as that of capital B sub 1 and capital B sub 2, except that we increase the indices of the points by 1. And as we had for capital B sub 1 and capital B sub 2, T for capital B sub 3 is also between 0 and 1. At T equals 0, capital B sub 3 of 0 starts where B sub 2 left off. So B sub 3 of 0 is equal to capital B sub 2 of 1. And here is the graph of capital B sub 3. Like the joining of capital B sub 1 and capital B sub 2 at this point, the joining of capital B sub 2 and capital B sub 3 at this point is continuous and smooth. This equation is for continuity. This second equation involving the first derivative is for smoothness. It states that there is a tangent line at the junction point between capital B sub 2 and capital B sub 3. It simply means that there is no bump or sharp corner at that point. And for a cubic B spline like the one that we are dealing with, we can impose additional smoothness conditions involving the second derivative. The second derivative deals more with the curvature of each segment. Let us summarize the conditions for an arbitrary number of segments for a B-spline curve. The first condition is the continuity condition, which states that capital B sub i of 1 is equal to capital B sub i plus 1 of 0. Geometrically, this means that where one segment ends, the next segment begins. The next condition has capital B sub i prime of 1 equals capital B sub i plus 1 prime of 0. This equation guarantees the existence of the tangent line at each junction point. And then we have the additional smoothness condition involving the second derivatives. There is one more condition that we have hardly touched upon, and that involves the convex hull. Each segment should lie within the convex hull of the points used to determine the segment. We'll discuss what the statement means geometrically. We use the four points P1 to P4 for capital B sub 1. Here is the graph of capital B sub 1. The convex hull of the four points is the smallest polygon that will contain all the possible segments that we can form out of the points. In this case, it is a quadrilateral. And note that B1 is inside this convex hull. 
For capital B sub 2, we use the points B sub 2 to B sub 5. Here is the graph of capital B sub 2. And here are all the segments formed by the different points. There should be six of them. We have the four sides of the quadrilateral, and we have the two diagonals. The convex hull of the four points, then, is the quadrilateral with the four points as vertices. We used P sub 3 to P sub 6 for capital B sub 3. Here is the graph of capital B sub 3. And one should be able to guess that the convex hull of the four points is the quadrilateral with the four points as vertices.